Yeah. All right, I'm going to introduce you. Welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Megan Eckenhoff. I am the assistant director here at Temple Music Prep. I am so excited to be here with you guys again today for the first time for me in person since February of 2020. We are excited to continue our master class series today with Juliet Kang, who is the first associate concert master of the Philadelphia Orchestra. Playing for her will be two violinists from the Center for Gifted Young Musicians here at Temple Music Prep. The first will be Naomi Main, who is a student of Jay Feivogel of the Jasper String Quartet, our resident string quartet here at Temple Music Prep. Stage is yours.
if you can just go a little bit further that way. Talk. Yeah. So there were so many things I loved about the the first couple of things we're always looking for, the intonation, the rhythm, those are all really, really great. Um, and then as you kept going, you addressed some of the things that I was going to say you need to do more of. Like you increased your dynamic range, you increased your expressivity, and your sense of flow. And so there were just so many really beautiful things about the way you played that. Um, one of the most sophisticated um, aspects of your playing is the way you were very gradual about chord changes and then you would linger on the note that continued, right? So it sounded, it was really clear to me what the line, the continuation of the line always was. And I really love that. At first, I wanted to say also, I forgot to say that I saw all of you doing classes and lessons all online through the pandemic. And I was so inspired. You guys really kept me motivated to keep practicing during the time when we were all, you know, with the Zoom and the headphones and all that stuff. So I just want to say you guys inspired me so much. Thanks for doing that. So yeah, I know like during the course of the year my playing kind of went downhill, but clearly <laughs> you kept practicing. That's wonderful. Um, let's take a little look. So I only have a few thoughts. And I want to ask you first, how did you feel you played I know we're all very self-critical, and when we play, we're always like, oh, I should have done that, or I need to do that in the next thing. So having played and done a really great job, what do you feel like, you know, you would want to explore further? Um, I think that overall, just uh, hearing the bass line more is something I'd like to work on. And also just like this being the first performance in person, uh, the nerves. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was wondering if you were nervous because I sometimes I think I hear a little hint of it, not, not other times, not at all. So, um, but uh, I did feel that you opened up tremendously through the performance. Did you feel that way too? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that if that's a good point. The bass line here is really um, beautiful, especially the opening. Right? It goes. <laughs> straight line down, we don't have the range for the lower stuff. Um, so I wonder if both to calm your nerves and to kind of dive into the, the deep sound that you got later on in the piece, if you just want to um, start again and think of your bow really sinking into the first couple of chords, but keeping your fingers, a, your left hand, making sure that it's not doing any kind of like gripping or holding on for dear life motion. So I think having just a little bit more relaxation in here, and maybe even just for the sake of that, almost imagine you're going to vibrate. So you don't have to add vibrato if it's not a musical choice you want to make, but just to feel like your fingers could vibrate if they wanted to. Um, I think that'll help release a little bit of the tension um, that occurs in the, in the beginning of like <laughs> sound, nerves. So, you want to start again and um, if you're, maybe, are you starting from the string or above the string? Have you thought about that? Um, I'm coming more from above. Above, okay. So as soon as you start the string ringing, um, then make sure you have time on the low note to, to increase the sound so that... <laughs> Feel about that. 
I would say, I just feel like immediately you take us into this more grand kind of sample. Um, now, speaking of the baseline, I think um, this. <laughs>
you're not actually. You know, you just want to imagine that you've got that dynamic motion in your bow so that, and don't count it. Because you're, it's, you, you have to trust yourself. It's fully, perfectly in time. So now just think of the direction of the notes in the phrase. And then when you go on. <laughs>
Um, when, you know what, one of the most kind of surprising or uh, dramatic uh, harmonic shifts for me is after... <laughs> Okay. 
So just when you're in the midst of like swirling through the music, then I would just be aware of when it's when it's happening. And sometimes it's accompanied with uh, when you want to make a note like a little more expressive. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it definitely has a beautiful place in playing and your playing specifically. Um, so I uh, just just kind of be aware that maybe you do it a little more than you realize. Okay. Thank you very much. Beautiful playing. Thank you, Naomi. That was lovely. Next up, we have Mio Amai, who is a student of Kimberly Fisher, and colleague in the Philadelphia Orchestra, playing some Brook Violin Concerto Number no. One.
so beautiful and very, very polished. You have such a great, just a great performance, both, both musically. And really together, right? Because you were just so long. Great, great communication. Um, so I think the things I have to say are kind of minor, but because your plan is already at such a high level, you know, it's not there. Um, but I noticed that, and I've noticed this over Zoom a lot and videos, of course, that a lot of people don't know who they're playing for. They, it seems like they're playing like for themselves or with the other performer, but remembering that the camera is there or, or I was sitting there before I quickly ran over it because, you know, the people to whom you're communicating the music, they also want to see and your sound is somewhat directional too. So just be aware at all times that like when you're talking to somebody, you face them, right? And you speak to them. And if you kind of every so often go like that and say, well, I'm telling you this thing, and then like go back and forth, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little hard to stay focused on that person, right? So when you're performing, often you look over to the piano, which is great for communication, but then you don't really come back all the way to your audience. When your audience is in a round, it's a little trickier. But let's just say, for now, we're focusing on the piano. Okay. So both having, you know, your focus on delivering your message, your music, to the camera or to the mic or whatever, and um, and visually, I, I know like if I'm performing for you, if I'm performing for you, I want to be really kind of centered so that you can see my scroll, you can see my bow. I don't want you to have to look at the back of my shoulder, you know. So that's the that was the first thing I thought of because when you first started playing, you were kind of turned away. So if you were the camera, you're kind of turned like this. And don't you find that's a little bit like, hey, what you, you know, <laughs> who's she playing for? And then when you played, a lot of the time you were addressing the audience, but like I said, you would turn to the piano and then the very entrance of your music as you were waiting for the two, it's like, for example, the second theme. You know, it, it kind of started over here and then it, it wandered back. Um, so I just want to make sure that from the beginning of every sound you make, that it's directed and focused at the recipient of your beautiful, beautiful song. Um, so that, and then the second thing, well, two things about the actual music one was, I would love to hear some of it slower, because a lot of it was so brilliantly fast, but um, at a certain point, they sound more like runs and like acrobatic kind of leaps than music, you know, like than, than dramatic music. So when things are that fast, like um, this, you know, it, it becomes like, each note loses a little bit of importance, and especially this, um, the, the big leap between um, the, the sudden stop. So I would like to hear this from here, a little slower, and Just to really hear a 
for you in terms of like the runs being a challenge or anything like that? It wasn't so difficult, not so difficult. Not so difficult. Okay, great. I have a feeling not much is difficult for you. Um, so what I liked, um, you know, a couple of really important things. This. I felt like each note was really drawn out in a beautifully like connected and sustained way. So in a way, the uh, emotional impact of, of each one of those notes being more passionate because they like each one was played through to the max value of the note. And then when you played this, um, because the, sh the tempo was slower, the shift was a little slower, and it made it seem like the shift was many more octaves then, you know, rather than just blah, blah, it was like blah, 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 blah. So I really liked that. That's my biased opinion. But if you'd like to, like, um, I mean, like, I guess my point is that tempo has a lot to do with the character of the piece, adding or changing the character. So that's how I interpret this piece. Just a little bit weightier and, like you said, clearer. Um, not easier because it was, it was really in both ways. But yeah, so I would encourage you to experiment with that tempo. And the other thing I wanted to say was your, uh, what size violin is this? Three fourths. Three fourths, okay. Um, when, you, when you graduate to a full size, of course, your sound will change and everything. But um, right now, I love your vibrato and I love your musicianship and your bow use and everything. But I just want to, um, put out there that our sound, our basic sound, comes without the vibrato, right? So um, just to kind of, you know, public service announcement that um, practicing without vibrato to ensure that the quality of your sound really resides in, uh, in my opinion, in the bow and the contact with the string, the amount of hair you use, you know, all those details, but just your basic sound should be what you envision it to be. And then the vibrato adds the dimension of, you know, character or resonance or this or that. So um, I would say that once you get to a full size, and of course right now too, that if you think a little bit more about that resonance in your tone. So let me hear the let's um, let's hear the first line just just by a little low, and let's can you try it once without any vibrato? and yet with the most vibrant tone you can make. So the most glowing, rich, deep, with no vibrato. drama in there. Can I suggest that like you start the opening again? And sooner than you did, move to a flatter hair so that you're not so much on the side. And um, when you think when you move to a flatter hair, also think about the uh, speed of your bow not exceeding the rate of, uh, just not exceeding, not getting too fast in the bow. Sometimes I feel like you're a little bit surfacey, and I haven't, I don't always hear the depth in each note, so especially the passing notes. You know, those ones sounded a little, maybe, maybe that's the effect you're going for, which is beautiful, but let's hear it once with like every note, finding that, maximum contact point and richness. Good, good. Do do it again. The beginning was great. Right there. Don't don't lift up the um, the weight of the bow too soon. Any 
vibrato, just the most glorious sound. you to just always have that in your ear. Like, what is the sound you're producing, independent of your lovely vibrato? And then, when you, you know, when you're sure that everything you do with your bow, with the way your, you know, your string is glued into your bow, the amount of hair, the speed, etc., um, and the shape of the note, so like how quickly it decays or not decays, you know, or the beginning of the note, how could you sink into it or how much you delay? All those little kind of dimensions to sound production. Um, once you've done that, then the vibrato, you can add it on with um, maybe more variation of vibrato so that it's the vibrato is decorative and it adds, adds a lot, but then you can, you can maybe separate out the, the different types of fast vibrato wide vibrato. So, you know, you have beautiful vibrato. And it's really fast and, and thrilling there. sound, then I think you can really open up your tone quality uh, in, in a great way. I think this is a good end. Um, it was so brilliant. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much to Juliet Kang for joining us. We so appreciate your, your wisdom and your knowledge and sharing that with our students. They all have learned so much today. Um, to also to, oh, she left. Do he kill our accompanist by failed to mention? <laughs> Next week, instead of a master class, we'll be holding a student recital hour concert, same time, 2.30 p.m., live on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is an opportunity for any of our students to perform, whether they're in an individual lesson studio at Temple Music Prep, in the Center for Gifted Young Musicians, or in the Community Music Scholars Program, which meets up at Main Campus. So thank you all so much for being here. We'll see you next week.